well as Thursday wrestling, and you know what that means. So today we're going to keep this another short video for all of you guys. This time we're only going to do NXT UK and of course Impact Wrestling. So let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay, right here. So let's begin with NXT UK with their opening match, Heritage Cup Rules Match. Now, this match was set up due to an interview that took place by the Supernova Sessions, Noam Dar, and Shar Samuels. Now, this match was set because apparently Shaw Samuels criticizes ben, uh, Nathan Frazier because he has been spending much of his time outside of the UK. But now that he's back and learning the style, he believes that he is not in the same cloth as him. So they decided to put him in a Heritage Cup rules. But of course, Noam Dar with his cockiness and arrogance ways. After the first round, he actually sucker punched him, but it is who he is, and because of that, it did allow him to pick up two uh, pinfalls on this one, as for Nathan Frazier too. Now, this doesn't mean it's the end for Nathan Frazier, but they were thinking, they were proving a point that, oh, he'll never catch up, he'll never be part of the same cloth as them. It doesn't matter, he's there, but we'll see what happens down the line. Now... As you know, recently, Trent Seven has been dealing with Gra uh, Sam Gradwell because uh, Trent Seven has been declared, has been going around telling people he, he's a good inspirational person. He was hanging out with, with Jake Stars because Piper Nivens wasn't there yet. Gr uh, Sam Gradwell is calling him a fool that he is trying to weasel this way in because Sam Gradwell was one of the original members of the NXT UK brand. But however, he had to leave due to the fact of his injuries. So basically, he does not like the fact that he's being overshadowed. So basically, he started more of his verbal comment. But he did get bitch slapped by Trent Seven for not shutting up. Now, the next match we have is Levi M uh, Muir taking on the newly the Mark Andrews, who is now part of of a new faction called Subculture, alongside with Danny Luna <coughs> and his tag team partner, Flash Morgan Webster. I have to say, this is a brand new <coughs> Mark Andrews. I love what he has turned to. I hope they keep on going in this direction. I, I'm becoming a fan. I became a fan as a, when he as a tag team, but doing this, awesome. I did love when he won the victory, so that's what it is. Now, last week we saw what happened with Saya Brookside. She was ver viciously attacked by Amelia, who feels she was overlooked. Now, Sid Scala had to scramble to figure out what to do. Who's going to take her place? Amelia thought, oh, she's out. She's going to be rewarded to become Zaya's, I mean, Zaya's out. That means she takes over. But Sid Scala will not tolerate Amelia trying to reward, believing, oh, she took her out, she's going to reward. However, she did set up in a ma set her up in another match against Zaya Brookside when she's medically cleared. So this is going to be a big fight. I know Amelia, um, Zaya Brookside is going to take all of her anger out on her for costing her an opportunity to be part of the gauntlet to hopefully become number one contender, but we'll see. But the real mystery was, who is going to take her, her spot? We'll get to that in a bit. Now, we did saw the aftermath of what happened 
in the match between Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan, what they didn't show afterwards, Amir Jordan was sad that he lost the match. He has to leave NXT UK. But I don't think this will be the last time we will see him. Somewhere down the line, he will come back and he'll be back with a vengeance against Kenny Williams. He'll probably be a much better wrestler than him. And that's all I can do and hope for. Now, <coughs> we see a face-to-face -face conversation between both for the Heritage Cup trophy between A-Kid and Tyler Bate. As you know, A-Kid is the current Heritage Cup champion and Tyler Bate is the challenger. Now, Tyler Bate felt he should have been in the first, but because of the pandemic, he wasn't. So this, they have some good, ex, some exchange of words and that whole thing. But who will be coming out on top in this match? Well, we'll just wait and see when that happens. Now we get to the number one contenders for the NXT UK Women's Championship in a gauntlet match. First up, it was Isla Dawn versus Amelia McKenzie. Now, this was a very hard-hitting match. But however, in this one, you see more of Isla Dawn becoming more vicious, more dangerous than she could ever been. So she beat Amelia in this part. Her second opponent was Danny Luna. I did not expect, I was like, I did not expect a whole lot with Danny Luna, but she did a pretty good job. But it was an effort, but Isla Dawn came. But here comes the mystery. Who took over Zaya Brookside's spot? That is none other than, of course, the 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 last boss, the best wrestler in the world, Mako Satomura. I don't think Isla Dawn expected it whatsoever. I was happy. I was okay with the idea. And, of course, no matter what Isla Dawn tried to do to ensure she remains in the gauntlet, it was still not enough against her. But, of course, the final person that Mako Satomura had to face is none other than the fashionista uh, Ginny. But of course she had her little guinea pig. Uh, Joseph Connors by her side. He even tried to interfere. But it wasn't enough. Uh, Mako kicked him right in the gut. And of course Mako did not lose uh, sight on Ginny. And allowing herself to win the match. However Kaylee Ray is still not impressed. Believing that. There is no way anybody like Mako Satomura is going to be the one to strip her of her title. Well, we'll see. She may have lost to her the first time. Like they always say, first try, well, second try, it's probably be the, the luckiest time. We'll see when we get there on that very a match. I can't wait to see it. So but for right now, let's move on with Impact Wrestling. Okay, so this is the final go-home show before this Saturday's latest pay-per-view by Impact Wrestling under Siege. Opening match was the number one contendership for the Knockouts title between Rosemary and Havoc. Now, these two women have been the Knockouts champion before. Now, of course, Deanna Prazo did not want to challenge anybody. She was trying to avoid it, but Scott Demore took care of it. So this was determined. Now, I was a bit more biased on this one because these two are fantastic wrestlers. But the real question was who would probably be the one to have it more. And to my surprise, it was Havoc. Because right now, we all know that oh, she's no longer aligned herself with Nevaeh after she betrayed her. And now we're seeing her being the more of the singles competitor that we know and love before. But however, ever since she won her match, Deanna Perrazzo tried to give her peace for a mime. Here comes Kimber and Susan try to give her a helping hand. But they got spooked by Decay, so they had to run to the hills. So I thought that was funny. But however, Havoc took matters in her own hands and tombstone Deanna Perrazzo out there to prove that she could be may, most likely be the one to take her out. So we'll get to that on sun, on Saturday. Now, the Good Brothers, as you know, have been trying to get back in their winning ways 
ever since they lost the, the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team titles. Not once, but twice to Finn Juice. So, basically, we're going to... This one had a very interesting where Kenny gave some good words about what he is tending to do. I mean, that is very interesting. I like it. Now, the next match is a number one's contendership for the X Division title. We have... TJP, Pity Williams, AC Romero, Ace Austin, Rohit Raju, and of course, the, uh, El Fantasmo. I kind of knew he would be in that match because he seems perfect enough in the beat in this. I have to say, I was impressed with what he did where he walked around the ring, balancing himself like he thinks he did the circus act. But it did help out because Fantasmo is a, 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 an, an amazing wrestler. I'm personally a fan of his ability, you know, what he can do. So, he is now going to be the... <coughs> so, he won the match. And, wow, I love it. Now, as you know, the more loves nothing more when people whine too much about their problems. And this time, he had a deal with Susan. Reason, Susan always has a temper tantrum. Saying after what happened last week where Daniel that that the match was cheated and she wanted a match. She's demanded a match not only against Daniel, she wants a tag team match. Kimber does not want nothing to do with this. But Scott Demore made it happen. Instead, he wanted this match to be next week, so instead he put it on under siege. And of course Susan was okay with the idea, but not Kimber. I mean Poor Kimber. You guys wanted Sue Young out of the way. And this is what you get. Someone who get has a temper tantrum. Now, Violent by Design, we all know they have been spreading their message about the sickness. But recently, we know what happened. Rhino lost his match. I was expecting, personally, <coughs> <coughs> that Joe Dorian's going to beat his ass. But it didn't happen. Jo um, was his, Eric Young has started the question, okay, what mistakes were made? We did a new plan. And I'm like, hmm, I like where they're going with that. They're not getting their message loud and clear. I think that's a good thing how they're spreading the story about Violent by Design. You have an unsuccessful match with Rhino... And now you're seeing, oh, mistakes were made. I like that. Now, once again, we are back in Swingers Palace. And this time, they ask who has the odds and the tag team to, to get involved. First, we have Ace Romero and Triple XL. Of course, Rohit Raju with Shira. Ace Austin and what's the Madman Fulton. And once again, TJP decided to bring the one person who can give the odds. And everybody left. They didn't want to hear it because we all know who has the odds. <laughs> so basically, that match will be is set for Under Siege. Like, number one contenders for the AE, no, the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team titles. Next match, we have Sam Beal versus Willie Mack. Now... I wasn't too much pump of it, but I can tell you in this one, uh, Willie Mack won his match. But as soon as the match was won, he was viciously attacked by W. Morrissey. This is going to be a very, very f interesting feud between them. And I can't wait to see where they're going to go with it. Now we get an interview with De uh, David Finley, who explains that last time they were laid down on the ground by the elite. And this time, Eddie Edwards brought... Kenny the kendo stick as the difference maker. Get it? Kenny said he was the difference of what happened last week. But this time, we'll see what happens. Now, once again, we're seeing the tease of Slammiversary. As you know, last year, we had the same thing where we were expecting EC3. But now, it's a possibility we could be expecting Chelsea Green and, of course, um... Samoa Joe. 
Well, we don't know yet, but it's not 100% confirmed. I know there's a lot of tease of that, but we'll see what happens. Now, once again, we got the All About Me show with Tennille. Taylor Wilde went there to confront her, saying that they're, they're not friends. Now, here's the thing. There is no secret with Tennille Dashwood that many times over, we've seen her. She had tag team partners, and she walked out. And I think Taylor Wilde is paying attention. Like, why should I team with you? You walked out on your partners. Why should I trust you? And she's not interested in that. It, it's not in her nature. But we'll see what they're going to go with that. Then we get the match between Carl Anderson and Dave Finley. The match was good, but however, the match ended in a DQ thanks to Kenny Omega. But thanks to Kenny, the kendo stick made a huge difference maker. They were Finn Juice and Eddie, Eddie Edwards were not laid down on the ground. But however, this feud between both teams is far from over. That's going to be part of the of the uh, match that's going to take place this Saturday at Under Siege. Now, Chris Sabian had some interesting of words. Now, he did felt a little guilty for not being at the corner of James Storm. James Storm said he didn't need him at, by his side, but he felt that he should have been there when he needed it. And then because Moose broke his leg. Now, he did criticize Moose. Why did you do that? You won the match. There was no need to do it. But Moose is trying to set out a message. He wants to be the world champion. He wants to be the guy to dethrone Kenny Omega. That's what he wants to prove. But however, well, that's going to be... I'll explain more on the at the final of this part of the episode. Now... Jordan Grace had an unlucky match that was part of the Beyond the Impact show where she lost to Tasha Steeles. But however, Rachel Ellering did state, you know, she needs to put all her anger in a bottle and then let it all out once it happens. So we'll see where they're going to go with that too. Now we get to the match between Brian Myers against the K-member Crazy Steve. Once again, Myers outsmarted Black Taurus. Forced the ref to kick him out. Now he was able to win the match. But there is an old saying. You mess with the bull. You get the horns. So he got speared by Black Taurus. But the K gave him one of those. Telereader cards. This set has death on it. So this is going to be the most spookiest thing. For Brian Myers. The so called professional wrestler. Should have been more careful. Not to mess around with the K. But he did. Now, Don Callis, as you know, he thinks that he's on everybody's good side, but not Scott Demore. Scott is having a hard time trying to say, why are you doing this? You're the EVP of Impact, but instead you're putting your interest on Kenny. So he's making him a choice, and then he's telling him, I know what you're trying to do with Moose. You're trying to get into his head. But he's like, I'm trying to fire him up. No, Don Callis knows right from the get-go, since he's the invisible hand, he knows for a fact Moose is a threat to Kenny, but he will do whatever it takes. Moose is not going to tolerate Don Callis. Now we get to the main event between Moose, Chris Bay, and Chris, and Sammy Callum taking on Matt Cardona, Trey Miguel, and Chris Sabian. It was an amazing match. I did love it. It was incredible. But however, it was Sammy Callum who picked up the victory when he uh, did uh, power drive Chris Sabian to allow him to win. But however, the real question now in this matter for Don Callis, who is the bigger threat to Kenny Omega? You see Moose. He seems like a bigger threat. But however, it appears Sammy Callahan is now becoming a bigger threat. Now, this is one of those interesting storylines. It could fit in every way possible. Don Callis will do whatever it takes to Kenny to retain the Impact Wrestling World title. So, who, who will be the lucky recipient? For me, I'm kind of going for Moose. But we'll see what happens at Under Siege this Saturday. So, I can't wait. So, set your clocks for that. And let's get ready to watch it. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of me reviewing NXT UK and Impact. There will be more to come. I got more Japanese wrestling coming up for you. Uh, most likely, I will do an entire episode of Pro Wrestling Noah, but also an episode with 205 Live and uh, New Japan Strong. So, but for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah! And have a nice day. Bang!